live case from Kiyad. I think uh, they are going to do a case with uh, where they are using uh, OCT and IVS. <coughs> Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear. Yeah, uh, very good morning from Care Hospital. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Raju Menon here. Uh, Dr. Ranuj Kapadia and Dr. Sushila are there with me. Uh, we have scrub nurse uh, Vijaya and then uh, Rambabu is our chief technician along with Lakshmi here. Uh, uh, we, uh, today we have a 69 year old uh, patient with us. Uh, he had, he is a hypertensive and he had a bypass done in 2011 January. Uh, that time he had a TMT positive, he came with some angina, TMT was found to be positive. He was found to have a 2SL disease. Uh, he had a Lima to LAD and a SVG to diagonal. Uh, later, a year later, he actually came back with uh, complaints of again angina. And then uh, it was found that the ostium of uh, the LCX had a very critical stenosis. So a protected uh, uh, stenting of LMCA to uh, the LCX and OM was done at that time. This was uh, about a year back and uh, about six months back. And then uh, he again came back with angina and was found to have a TMT positive. Uh, he was taken up for a graft angio that showed a patent lima to LAD uh, and the diagonal graft also was patent and there was a significant instant stenosis. We'll just uh, take you through the pictures of the angiogram and I think uh, We'll take the opinion of the panel before we go ahead. Uh, this was the AP caudal view. Uh, can we have the next picture, can, please? Can you see the angios now? You are able to see the angios? Yeah, we can see the angio. Yeah, uh, that's the LAO caudal. And uh, that was the RAO caudal. So this is a gentleman with the bare metal stent restenosis. Uh, it's, it's six to nine months. Um, and it's a, it's a protected left main into a circumflex and, a, and the distal circ is a small branch. Any uh, uh, thoughts on how to approach this um, from the panel? Uh, yes, uh, looks like there is a borderline instant stenosis and uh, probably this is what uh, requires assessment again. It doesn't look very tight. Uh, Dr. Susil with me is Dr. Amal from Chennai. He just gave a talk on OCT and uh, Ajit gave a talk on IBS uh, FFR. I think this is the right case to decide what type of imaging device you want to use. This is Sushil, definitely can you, a borderline case. Uh, can you tell us what, uh, is that a DS? No, it's a bare metal stand. Bare metal. A cobalt C25 by 18. Well, from what I can see, it, to me, angiographically, it looks significant, uh, but obviously there's a side branch. Do you have any other view of that? Yes, uh, we'll go forward to the uh, LAO caudal here. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, in this view, it's very tight. Yeah, it, it does look... Uh, yeah, it's very tight. tight enough there. And so I uh, don't think you'll be able to get an IVAS or an OCT, certainly at this stage. You will need yeah, some pre-dilatation. Probably you have to dilate it and then uh, see the inside. Right, and I think that's our feeling too. And I think, I, I, I heard a little bit of the le your lecture just before. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the comments that the OCT is, and or, and or IVIS, is most useful in sort of eva evaluating post-intervention. It doesn't need to be immediately post, but when, anytime you have restenosis, whether it's, you know, obviously, in a, I think in a drug eluting stent, it's more relevant than a bare metal. But trying to uh, identify the etiology of the restenosis, whether there's stent fracture, uh, under expansion, I think those are the main issues. And I think imaging technologies uh, uh, like IVIS and OCT really help uh, facilitate that. So uh, I think uh, th that that's the most useful role. Now, the the this is obviously bare metal stent, and you know the, the restenosis rates are higher. Um, and the reason for using imaging in a case like this is to, tr you know, you, at this point you need to optimize the results for this patient. He's already come back with restenosis, and we want to make sure that the stent is well expanded, that there are no uh, edge dissections or any other issues that may complicate it. Now, the question I also had, and we were discussing here, is how do you approach this branch? The, if the distal circ is small. Would you protect that branch? Would you just uh, balloon and see what happens? Yeah, this branch is to be protected. It's a quite big one. But equally, I think wiring that branch is going to be challenging uh, from the angle 
the takeoff. So, uh, and also, Sushil, I'm just looking at the ostium of the left main uh, on the view that you show. Right. There seemed to be some disease or whether it's a spasm. Is that, is that a pressure drop? And what size is the catheter? Yeah, we have a six French here. Uh, there's no damping as such. Uh, the pressures appear to be all right. Uh, it's around uh, 100 by 60. Uh, there's no pressure damping as such. Uh, we are uh, operating with a six French uh, extra uh, backup guide, uh, XB3. And, and you raise an important thing. This, this is going to be a, potentially a difficult uh, branch to rewire because there's a tight lesion just proximal to it. And you, and you might not have as much torque control. Uh, we had discussed uh, wiring. Oh, made it look too easy. We had discussed wiring it off camera, so it didn't look too. It didn't. It didn't take too long. But we thought we'd show it because I think these are the ones that are challenging to wire. It, it, this, the wire went very nicely here. If it didn't uh, tr uh, go easily, this is one I might consider. You know, pre-dilating with an undersized balloon and reattempting to wire because when you have a tight lesion and difficult time controlling it. Pre-dialing at first, although it's not what you really want to do, uh, may be reasonable to uh, consider. And in terms of uh, pre-dilatation, uh, any thoughts from the panel? Uh, you know, obviously we have a second wire now, but we had sort of discussed a flex tome uh, balloon. In the U.S., we have an angioscope balloon, especially for ISR, tend to use those type of devices preferentially. Any thoughts? Uh, from the panel about that? And, and geographically, it's difficult to say about the calcium, so certainly from where I'm sitting, but uh, I think if, if you think you've done enough pre-dilatation, this may be a good time to put an IVIS or an OCT. Uh, okay. So we're going to take a, uh, just a small balloon. Uh, we haven't pre-dilated. Would anyone cons want us to try and pass the OCT without pre-dilating to see if it goes? I think I would pre-dial it okay. a bit more. Yeah. Okay. So, we'll, yeah, so we'll, this is our first balloon here. We're just going to take a 2-0. Uh, what 12, balloon do we 212. have? 212. 2-0-12. Yeah. Uh, it's a Maverick 2-0-12. Maverick. And I think you, uh, the points that you had made in your, in your lecture just prior, that OCT imaging is often easier to interpret. Uh, because, uh, you know, I think in the, in the session on Thursday, we had sort of talked, it's like looking at an HD TV versus a regular TV. For people, and uh, the, 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 the difference is, I think, for people that are used to IVIS, recalibrating to OCT is sometimes difficult because you see so many more things, and uh, whether you should act on them or not is not always clear. In terms of stent malapposition, small uh, dissections, and things like that, that you, we never saw before, so we didn't, inter, we didn't react to them. Now that we see them, should we do anything to react to them is a question. Come back a little bit. Yeah. You see the balloon is occlusive, and I think that's an interesting point. If you had gone with the OCT, I think the patient would have been ischemic during that whole time. just a gentle inflation at eight or something, and then we'll come down and just making a path for the OCT and, and just getting some perfusion. What is the size of the stain that was used earlier? It, it was a, 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 a 2518, I believe. No, 2.518. 2.518? Yeah. Mm. Which, you know, for a male, a 2.5 in the left main is clearly going to be undersized. Now, this is not a true left main because it only supplies essentially a circum an OM, high OM and a small, you know, circ continuation. But, uh, you know, in terms of reasons for re stenosis, it's, we'll see on the, and, you know, we're using OCT here. And in terms of looking at uh, vessel reference size, OCT is sometimes more difficult than IVIS because the, uh, the depth of penetration is less. Yeah, it's uh, probably IVS will be better to assess the size of the diameter of the vessel other than, uh, than OCT. But it's better to look at the diameter in this case because it's 2.5 stain, whether it was uh, undersized, undersized or not. Yeah, or not absolutely. Just, uh, now at this point you see uh, the flow in the circ is, uh, is limited now, uh, the circ continuation. So I think we do have to pre-dilate that circ because there's, uh, to me, you know, one, two flow balloon, there now. Balloon, balloon. So should we take that same balloon? Same, and, uh, the same balloon what yeah. do you guys think? Yeah. 
Okay. So we're, we're gonna, you know, we hadn't planned on it, but now with the reduced flow, uh, is he having any pain or? Yeah, now it's improved. It's it's perked up a little bit with some nitro. Actually, maybe we should wait now. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah, flow. Yeah. So we want, should we do the OCT? What does the panel want? So go ahead with the OCT. Yeah. Yeah. When you're doing the OCT, please look at the left main also. Yes. Maybe you know there's some disease in the left main. Yeah, which is becoming more clear now. That, and that was our plan because there clearly was plaque in the left main. Actually, before we do that, let me just show them the what the prep. Can uh, the camera? Oops, right here. Can the camera focus on here? Can you guys see the OCT here? The the prep of the OCT is, is fairly straightforward. Um, you have to. It has to be prepped with uh, contrast. Um, and uh, let me see here, uh, trying to get this in view. Yeah. So this is the, maybe a focus on the machine here. Back up a little, you're great. So basically this is attached to the, the, this is the catheter, it's attached to a sidearm. This is just a contrast syringe, basically purge the lumen with uh, contrast. And then the, the device just basically plugs in with a single click into the machine. Um, and you can see the panel on, on your screen as well. And so once it's plugged in, it becomes active. So the key with the OCT is, um, okay, we'll go ahead and load this now. Uh, we're we're going it, to, it's a rapid pullback, but it's an automated pullback once it uh, senses uh, contrast and a blood-free lumen. Can you uh, focus on that? Can you see the, the uh, light here? Yeah, we can see that clearly. Okay, great. So. Before yeah. you do that, Sushil, can you do the eye test and show that? I quite like that eye test. Yeah. That's it, yeah. Okay. okay. You see that? Uh, just to standardize the, the... Just yeah. showing that it's working. Um, you so basically do that to see if the, the light source is working. So you pinch that with, uh, between your fingers and you get an appearance like an eye. So please go ahead. Okay. Huh? You got it? Okay. Me too. Like Can you just wipe the wire for a second real quick? Just uh, we have a little bit of uh, stuff on the wire. Right. Yeah. So it's this is a manual system, so it's just uh, only thing should be careful the uh, so it's a short lens monorail. is in the tip, right. so you shouldn't touch it. Okay. So we're going to go with the OCT. Fluoroscopically you'll see there are two markers. Both markers will be past the lesion. So why don't you show Floro and the uh, OCT uh, panel, please? Can we see Floro on the big screen and the OCT panel on the small one? Are you guys seeing our Floro or no? Uh, we are seeing the OCT. Just uh, can you show us the Floro? Change please? it to Floro. Yeah. Thank you. And you can put the OCT machine in yeah, the small OCT window. Yeah, OCT catheter moment. You can see it. It's not yet come. There are two markers. Uh, So both markers yeah. are going to have to be past yeah. the lesion. And that's probably good. And make sure our guide is disengaged enough because we really want to see the ostium. Okay, that's good. But we have to actually, you know what, that probably won't work yeah. here. We have to be a little bit closer, just, just at it because we're going to have to get flush in there. Huh? You should keep the we, second marker. So we have to get the guide uh, distal, a little closer. Just distal to the, the area we want to, to scan. And then we disengage after that. We can't disengage. First marker is just as close as we can yeah. be able to flush. So, um, you know, the, one of the challenges here is going to be keeping the guide engaged enough that we can, you know, purge the uh, vessel of blood and, and have contrast, but just barely so that we can see all the way prox to the left main. So let's see here. We want to make sure that we have enough that we're going to maybe this is okay. just do a, a small injection there. Yeah, I can see this okay. okay. You're okay? We've got to go a little bit further in. You see, we're, we're not quite past the marker yet. Me too. Can we get the direct feed from the OCT, please, and not the camera on it? Yeah, we can see the OCT picture. Just focus it. That's what, exactly. yeah, that's thank okay. you. Yeah, that's All better. Right. So um, what I'm going to do, so the way the OCT works, it's an automated pullback. Once we're ready, whoever's operating the panel is going to say uh, uh, enable. And once it's enabled, I think we have, what, 15 seconds? 15 seconds to do the flush. As was mentioned in the lecture just a little bit before, as you had mentioned, it has to be a fairly rapid flush, and the OCT will pull back uh, once it starts pulling back once and senses that there's contrast and it's a, sort of a blood-free lumen. 
it's going to pull back over a span of just under three seconds, um, at 2.7, I think, to be exact. But uh, we just say I just say three because that's what I, it's easier to remember, uh, and and then it automatically stops. So I, I have a 20 cc uh, syringe with contrast here, um, and we, it generally we're, we're going to want to inject. Uh, a total of at least 14, 15 cc's. And it has to be rapid, as was mentioned. And uh, somebody had mentioned in the lecture earlier, don't let someone weak do it. So I don't know if I should do it or it's going to embarrass me if I don't inject hard enough. So, uh, But I'm going to give it a try here. All right, so Hold this. we're ready? Hold this. OK. Sure. Um, okay. So, uh, can we actually show the floor and the small screen before we do it, just so they can see how rapid the pullback is? Not the camera, but put, please put flow in the small screen and the OCT Flora panel in the, the big screen. screen. Just want to show this before we pull back. Now, please keep the OCT in the big screen. OCT in the big screen and flow in the small screen, please. You know what we'll do? We'll cine it and I can show it to you right after. Maybe we'll just do that, OK? Um, because it's uh, for, for some reason the floor is not coming in the small screen. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and enable. Okay. Enable. Cine. Okay, okay, done. All right. So, you know, uh, off Cine. So can you go show floor on the big screen real quick so they can see what the pullback looked like? I think no, actually. Okay, I'm with mode. Hmm? Mm. Oh, let's play the Cine. Is everybody playing the Cine? Is that? No, yeah, that's, okay, that's, that's an a, okay. All right, so you don't really see much, but that you see that you can see a little bit of the element move qu uh, quickly. So now let's go back to the OCT on the uh, big screen, please. I just wanted to let the audience know that unlike the IBIS catheter, the OCT catheter secures the position. So the, the fiber optic cord moves within the catheter while during pullback. And after pullback, it automatically drops down to the initial position. So you don't have to reinsert the OCT catheter through the lesion again. Okay. So uh, can you see the IVIS, uh, the, I'm sorry, the, it's habit. Can, I, can you see the OCT uh, screen there? Yeah, we can see that very clearly. Okay, so we're gonna start distal and go proximal, okay? Uh, and we have someone operating the console for us to do our measurements. Uh, sorry. Yeah, so let's play it once. Why don't we just, can we just play it? Yeah, let it run through. You see a lot of intimal hyperplasia. Yeah, it's significant hyperplasia, intimal hyperplasia is there. And there's, uh, yeah. you see the area that we pre-dilated? And you see some, you know, neo uh, revascularization there as well. It looked like briefly, I, did, I looked at it quickly. Um, so now we're gonna just take some measurements. Um, so let's take a distal reference of the vessel. I'm sorry, hold on a second. We have the hoop for this. Maybe put it back in the hoop. Wow. Okay. So, can we get distal reference first, please? This is uh, proximal, right? Yeah. So the vessel size is is not that big proximally. This is you know just proximal to the stent. Is that? Can everyone see those measurements? It's getting a mean diameter of about 2.6, an area of 5.3. Can we go all the way proximal? Um, you know, we're not going to as close to the ostium as we can get. So, uh, and so come, come a little bit in and let's just see. So it doesn't look like there's critical plaque. Go, uh, I'm sorry, more distal, please. Slowly keep going more distal. And that's just blood swirl there because it's going to be hard to clear right there because the guide is right at the ostium. Keep going distal. And just keep going till we get to the end slowly. And let's find the smallest area and we'll make a measurement for proximal. Okay. So come back more, more uh, proximal again. More proximal, proximal. Keep coming, please. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Make, make a measurement there, please. That looks. So uh, those are automated measurements. The area is 4.2. Um, this is proximal to the stent. This is the area that looks of, of plaque that you see there. Um, you know, in terms of, what do you think about the characterization of the of the plaque? You, we had, you had just gone through some nice examples in your lecture. Uh, what are your thoughts about the, the plaque that we've seen and everything else? From what I can see from a distance of shield, there's some calcium between six to nine, and uh, the plaque, yeah, the rest of the plaque looks mainly fibrous. Yeah. mostly. 
Yeah, no, I, I agree. So a little bit more distal again. So now let's go through the stent. and let's see if there's, slowly scroll through the stent and see if there's any areas of under expansion. Keep going to the stent, please. Keep going, keep going. So, you know, now keep going. Keep going, keep, just keep going, yep, please. So now we see stent struts there, you see them. You see a, a lot of neoantibal hyperplasia diffused throughout the stent. And you see that, that could be related to our balloon there, um, that, uh, that dissection uh, in, in the, in, in, inside the stent there. Keep going, keep going. So we're still in the stent, distal edge of the stent now, sort of diffuse still throughout. And you'll keep coming. You still see, maybe, I don't know if you can use the pointer. Can you point out the stent struts for people? Just so that, yeah. And you see the shadowing behind it. You see that design. And go to the next, you see at 9 o'clock there's some stent struts. And you see shadowing behind uh, as well. You know, the 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 there. Okay, let's keep going distal, please. Keep going distal. Again, this diffuse ISR throughout the stent. Keep going distal, distal, keep going, keep going. So now the, we're outside the stent here. Is the stent under under expanded? Can you see some places? You know, it doesn't really look like it. I mean, that, that I saw, it looks like uh, just a lot of knee into hyperplasia. I don't see any areas of under expansion. Do, do, what, any other, any thoughts that are different from the panel? It's, it certainly looks undersized, doesn't it? I think it's um, uh, probably yeah, close and to... And this to area, if you see, it's not touching the interval. Right. I mean, the problem with OCT, again, to see all the way out to the adventitia is just not going to be possible for the most it's part. The um, so the question is, there's diffuse ISR. The stent's probably undersized. Approximately the left main plaque is, is, is there, but it looks to be an adequate area for what it, what it supplies. You know, we don't, in terms of criteria for left main, there was an excellent talk yesterday. Uh, we had talked about, uh, you know, criteria 4.8 that now uh, Dr. Park has been... Uh, uh, promoting, um, but regardless, a an area above four, since this vessel essentially only supplies a circumflex, is probably uh, adequate. Um, but, so I don't Do think we need to stand one. proximal unless we're going to treat the whole vessel. The question is, what is the treatment strategy that people would employ here? Uh, we, you know, we have the uh, a new uh, drug eluding balloon that's available here, a serolinus eluding balloon, the Magic Touch. Um, the you know, and that there's no, the clinical trials are ongoing, so we don't have a lot of data behind it. it, it you know, these, the, those, that balloon would be done with a, uh, two inflations, 45 to 60 seconds. You know, deliver the drug, which would elude over the period of essentially a, a month, 28 days. Um, or would people just go ahead and, and now this patient failed bare metal stents, would they say we should just do a drug eluding stent here? What are, what are the opinion of the panel? Well, I, I think... Uh after the Staccato trial, uh, using uh, the sequin please drug eluting balloon is probably not a bad option. Uh, but personally, uh, for this case, for bare metal failure, I probably would go with the DES. Um, uh, that's my preference, to be honest. Any other What was the first stint that was put? Can you tell us about the first stint? It was a 2518. It was a cobalt chromium 2.518 bare metal stent. It was uh, pre-dilated with a uh, two balloon and then stented with a 2.518 that time. No, I, I was just thinking, Sushil, if you can hold on for a second, let me take a poll from the audience towards the drug eluting balloon or drug eluting stents. So can everybody who supports drug eluting balloon can show, show your hand? There's no single hand raised in the audience. <laughs> I assume that everybody else wants regulating. So, okay, regulating stents. Sleep? <laughs> regulating stents. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's certainly more hands, but not all of them. So, what about the others then? What would you do? Plain right. balloon. Plain balloon. Plain or? balloon. Okay. No, I think the the, the voting favors uh, regulating stent. All right. So then, in that case, I probably. I mean, what are your guys' thoughts? Would you come back all the way to the left main, since there's plaque? Would you bring it back to the ostium? Yeah. Uh, Using a regulating stent, I think, with the plug there, uh, instead of leaving it in the ectatic segment, coming up to the ostium would be Can you be more idea. specific about the first stent that was used? What type, what uh, make was it, the first uh, drug eluting stent? It was not a drug eluting. This is a, a bare metal. It was a bare metal Bare metal, is it? Yeah. Uh, then you have uh, 
definitely a for putting. So would journey. people predilate this branch at this point? Let's we can take, let's take another picture here, see how it looks now. It's been some time. Yeah, I would predilate it a bit more because on the OCT you can still see a lot of near and a near and are not really fractured or. Uh, cut with the balloon, so I would prepare the lesion a bit more just to avoid under expansion of the new stand. The same balloon. Yeah. yeah the, the one other issue which uh, we were just discussing uh, uh, comparing drug eluting balloon versus drug eluting stent was uh, here the issue of uh, coming all the way back to the ostium of the left main, uh, I don't think we will be able to position it just proximal to the previous stent. So we would have to cover that plaque and come all the way to the ostium of the left main. And uh, the second issue was uh, there's a branch and with two layers of stents, uh, there's high probability that uh, we might lose that branch. So uh, that was the reason we were thinking whether uh, in this particular case uh, it would be more comfortable to go ahead with a drug eluting balloon rather than a drug eluting stent. Any comments on that? Well, I think you, you are certainly going to treat more than the stented portion. So with your drug eluting balloon, uh, yes, you can treat the ISR, but the, the remaining lesion, as you pointed out, in the proximal part, including the left main, uh, I think you need to cover with the, uh, with the stent. So, uh, and I, uh, yes, the branch is a problem, but I think, you know, uh, the, if you pre it as you're doing now, you, you, you may be okay with covering it with a stent. Okay, so um, the... Six. So I think we are, I think my yeah, feeling as well is that drug eluting stent is probably what's yeah, best for this patient. Um, in this scenario, because of the plaque proximal, as you mentioned, uh, and the diffuse nature as well. Um, and I think that, you know, but I think this is a, a point of, of uh, debate. And I think, you know, in the U.S., we don't have drug eluting balloons, and I don't know if there will be available anytime in the near future. But I think for ISR, uh, you know, we'll see what the, you know, they're collecting data with this balloon, the magic touch. Uh, we'll see wh what it shows, but I think it's an intriguing concept for focal ISR. And in here, it's not focal, it's diffused throughout the stent, and it's a bare metal stent. So I think for this patient, the best option may be to, to uh, re-stent. The, the point you raised is an important one. If you're going to use a drug eluting balloon, you need to prepare the, the vessel well, because um, that you need to make sure you get an optimal result, whether you use a flex tome or whatever, uh, really get good expansion of, of the stent before you deliver the drug. Uh, and, and don't use the drug eluting balloon as your primary PTCA balloon. Another issue is uh, we have a stent in there, we're going to put another stent. Would you like to keep the wire in the side branch because you'll be sandwiching it between two stents? Or oh, is it be easy to actually pull back the wire in the side branch after we actually put in the stent there? No, no, the two stent layers, it becomes difficult, so wires get yeah. entangled. We did land in trouble before, I think. Uh, okay. If you are planning to put a stent, then the definitely that uh, should be brought out. Uh, if you are doing a uh, balloon, regulating balloon, then it's okay. Uh, Can you show the IVA screen on the big screen again? I'm sorry, OCT. The OCT. I have a, it's a ha habit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, one of, it's one of those harder to break. Uh, so. Can you sh actually show the direct feed, not the camera, please? Six. Just the direct feed from the OCT That's so we can see the measurements? Fluids. Thirty-eight dollars for Thirty? Huh? Yeah. Can we see the OCT uh, feed, please? Thank you. Uh, so you see the length from the distal edge of the stent to the left main is uh, twenty-six. So, uh, you know, want to take a picture here? You pre that's uh, that's after pre-dilatation or no? Yeah, you have to pre-dilate. So, pre what do you got, what do people think about that uh, continuation? I, I, street validation sounds like a good idea. Even if you're using a DEB, you need to prepare the lesion. Mind you, the DEB you're using is mostly to deliver the drug rather than pre dilatation. So you have to pre dilate the lesion adequately and use the DEB. You get better results. So I think we actually, uh, I think there's a, we had, you know, after you, the discussion with, with the panel and everyone else, I think we had decided with the drug eluting stent and to treat all the way prox. So, we go back and forth. As you can see, there's no clear consensus. Um, no, Sushil, actually, whatever you, you decided uh, before, you can uh, proceed because the opinions in the panel uh, and the audience could vary. Go ahead with the original plan, whatever you people have decided, so that uh, we will not have any confusion. Yeah. 
We thought of a drug eluting stent actually. So yeah. I think then go ahead. No. Redilatation okay. and drug eluting. Yeah. Please, so please go ahead. The distal, we're well, going to put a 2.5, okay. which is a 2.5.28, because you saw before the distal reference of the vessel beyond the stent is really only 2.5. So because you want to cover the left main totally, is that it? Yeah, we're going to bring back all the way to the osseo of the left main, and then we'll take a post dilatation balloon to aggressively dilate the left main. The branch looks okay, so we'll pull this wire before we deploy the stent. Okay? Yeah. Do we have it? You take a 2.5.32. I think 20E6 was the length, so I think 28 should be okay. Okay. okay? Uh, that point of removing the wire uh, okay. is very important because when the normal stent, the wire yes. being uh, in between the wall, vessel wall and stent is okay. But when you already have a restenosis with stent in and, and when you are putting a second layer of stent, the, sometimes you could land in trouble. There we had instances where the entire stents got uh, dislodged when you are trying to pull it out. So uh, it's very important uh, to take care of that aspect. Yeah, that's a very valuable point and you, you have to remember if you're using a polymer coated wire, you have to be even more careful because I've seen instances when the polymer gets ripped off from the wire. So some, I don't jail a polymer coated wire even with single stent and I think you should, uh, should not jail uh, any wires between two stents. And just to, uh, we, you know, we have to move forward in the interest of time so I'm going to have them get a uh, post dilatation balloon available. Um, what would you like, 3-5? Uh, 3, five? three oh, your choice. 3 oh should, should be better, I guess. Okay. Three we just have available three. a 3 oh non-compliant uh, balloon. 18, 15, 18. 15 should be okay. 15. Yeah, 15 is fine. Can you show us the fluoro? We yes, are seeing please, the OCT image the floral screen, please. Sorry. Floral screen, please. Thank you. Floral. Uh, Sushil, while they're positioning the stent, I've got a question for you. If this was a DES restenosis, uh, would you uh, still use a drug eluting balloon or would you put another probably more uh, like a third generation DES? I think if it was focal stenosis with a drug eluting, uh, uh, with a drug eluting stent, I would do a DEB. You know, we don't have that option, don't have it available, but if I had it available, in two, it just, it, that's my gut feeling. I don't know if it's right or wrong. Um, so, but I, that's probably what I do with focal. And if this was focal, I'd be much more eager to do a drug eluting balloon uh, without proximal disease. I think we have to go in a little bit more. A little bit more, okay. Oh, jump forward. I think probably in just another marker, no? Because I see, are we, because we're not outside the stent yet. Because you still have some room proximally. Just a marker. There, stop. Yeah, sure. Do a quick cine. Very good. I think it looks pretty good. You'll take one more view. LA okay. of water. I think it's pretty good. I would, because you see Fine. the stand. Okay, okay go, it's up to you. Go ahead. No, please. Yeah, yeah. That's a good choice of these uh, stand length, I would say. It's just spot on. So, and, and I, we can't take credit for that because we measured on the OCT machine, so. Fourteen. So we're just deploying this at a, at a twelve to fourteen. It's a promise uh, element uh, pro. Okay. Yeah. What stent is taken? Promise element uh, two five by twenty eight. We know that we're undersized proximally, but distal reference is two five. So we elected to just take the two five twenty eight, um, and we'll post dilate proximally. Right. These long balloons take some time to come down. So you just have to be somewhat patient sometimes uh, and not force it because you don't want to disrupt, uh, you know, suck the guide in and disrupt proximally. Here approximately we're stented so it's less of a concern, but. So Shil, can I raise a controversial question about the promise element? So you obviously got the stent all the way back from the ostium with a guide cat hitting at the ostium and you're going to post dilate it. Are you worried about longitudinal compression? Yeah, I, I don't think in this scenario, right now I'm not, now that the balloon's out and less a, a, of the issue. Uh, but I, I think it's an important question. I think there's a lot of debate and controversy about it. Um, I know some people feel very strongly and uh, have enough concerns that, 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 that impacts them. Um, but I'm not quite sure how big an issue it is. Uh, what are your thoughts? You know, in the left main, you have put a 2.5 diameter stint. Would you like to optimize it proximally? You're taking a 3 into 12 uh, non-compliant balloon. So let's rewire that branch before we do that. 
Yeah. And w yeah, one I comment I'd like to make about promise element right. again. Uh, so obviously you need to post dilate at the left main. Uh, if you try to oversize it, I mean, the stand, uh, because of the thinness of the strut, right. you can actually uh, destroy yeah, the polymer. Right. So yeah, you have right. to be a bit careful. I think this left main is probably close to four millimeter. And uh, you have to post dilate it significantly. But maybe but it's a good idea to do a OCT now to see what is the yes. uh, position of the stent in the left main. We, we could do that. The, the, one of the, uh, the limitations, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, with OCT here is, you know, in terms of seeing the actual vessel size, it's, it's you know, IBIS is easier because it, it, in terms of the depth uh, of penetration. Um, clearly, this left main is going to be larger than 2.5, but we were sort of had to do this because of the physical reference. And the left main here supplies, you know, relatively, it's not a true left main. It's a, it's a circ equivalent. might need a bigger bend on this wire, um, but we're going to try and, you know, before we, pre uh, you know, post dilate, I thought I was just trying to protect the, uh, that branch. You know, look, it's open, I w I'm not going to do anything with it, but the concern is if we get more aggressive with dilating the left main and we shift more plaque, could we, sh could we make it worse? I think now the, uh, the wiring is going to be challenging, I feel, but yeah. You may prove me wrong. No, as long as uh, the flow is maintained, if two Mr. layers of strength, if they find it difficult, I think uh, is. Uh, yeah, I think probably we'll just change over to Whisper or something, what? a hydrophilic wire. I think that should slip in better. You can see that it's just seeking that, this. but then it's. Well, we could maybe put a little bit bigger bed, you think, now that you've dilated uh, I mean, and deployed the stamp. I think we have about 10 minutes left, so our goals in the next 10 minutes, we're going to wire, we're going to post dilate. Uh, we have a 325 balloon here, um, non-compliant, and, uh, and be, uh, you know, post dilate aggressively. And a 1618 with that should get to about 35, um, and then o do OCT and see how it looks. So you just said, I think you're taking a whisper wire? Yeah, okay. a whisper. And, and sort of, you know, it's putting a, a, a nice broad uh, a transition on it because you're going to have to, you know, as you said, you're going to have to try and hook back to that circumflex. And plugs it probably. Great. Gali pilch can put. They can check the OCT first and then see if required. We can uh, work on it. Otherwise, uh, uh, I mean, the, the issue uh, is I think we will have to dilate this proximally. Yeah, the uh, angle doesn't seem to be seeking. So it just went in and then. No, Rajiv, there are two, two layers of strength starts in exactly 90 degrees bend. First, yeah, we are in, we are in, we are in. Okay, that's good. Excellent job under pressure with everyone it's watching. very elegantly <laughs> done. <laughs> okay, so now we have the 325-15 uh, balloon. A 12, okay. So we're going to take this up high. And, and the whisper wire, the one thing to be careful with it, you know, if you get distal with it, it's a hydrophilic wire. It, it has, a, if you're not cautious about where it is, has a, it can cre uh, create uh, small wire perforations, which can be uh, c catastrophic. So if you use the whisper, I think it's important just to be careful. Any hydrophilic wire, 
it's important to be careful about its position and so you don't lose track of where it is distally. As a policy, we ask our fellow to hold the wire in the end always, irrespective of whatever others are using, his job is to just fix the wire there. <laughs> Otherwise, it tends to seek, gradually tends to move distally and uh, land up with small perforations. Got there? Okay. Okay. I came back a little deflect, bit. Okay. It's okay. Just go up high there, I think. I would go up to 16, 8. Okay. I think the balloon just came back. So. Yeah. You, you need to be careful space. not to come too close to the <laughs> proximal portion of the stent. So it's uh, 14, 16? Okay. 18, yeah. 18. You want to come back more proximal and just make sure you get the proximal edge of the stent? What is this balloon size, size you are using now? 32512, non compliant. So just uh, test there before you take the balloon out. Just want to make sure we got all the way back. Test, please. Okay, so it looks like we've gotten all the way back. We went up to 18 with this. Uh, you know, this is probably still undersized for the left main, but again, um, part of it is, you know, there's clearly going to be this is a taper because it's left main into an OM essentially. So we, you know, took a 2-5 stent, and as you mentioned earlier, uh, with these stents, you don't want, you're not going to want to take it up too much higher. Okay, we're going to go back with the OCT machine here. How are we on time? It looks like we have about less than five minutes left, so hopefully we'll be done with this. Uh, we'll take one picture here to see how the branch looks, and then we'll do OCT. Take one picture and then we'll do, you want to get some nitro, one picture and OCT? Yeah, just giving some nitro. Can you show us the plural? We want to see the Oh, oh yeah, please show floral, this. please. Can you show floral? We're going to do the OCT now, isn't it? Yeah. So OCT. that branch is open, so we're not going to do anything more with it. I mean, I think the OCD catheter, uh, just in my, uh, and again, I don't have the, the largest experience with it, uh, is a little bit more uh, adorable because it's not a rotating crystal. Uh, but you still have to be very careful not to kink it or damage the catheter. And I think that's one of the important points. And also, uh, with this position, the OCD catheter might hit on the mouth of the, or the inlet of the stent strut, which could even damage it. So you may want to uh, engage the catheter a bit more before taking it inside. Okay, that's a good point. So maybe get the guide in a little bit better if we can before we go to OCT. And then you can always pull it back during acquisition. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Not a very good assistant here. <laughs> so we go a little bit further. Can we go a little bit further? Because we still see the stents there. Can we see the OCT on the big screen, the direct feed from the OCT, please? Okay. That's fine. Good. That's good. Can we, can we see the direct feed on the big screen from the OCT, not the camera, please? Okay, and take the small screen off. This is contrast. Okay. So again, I'm just, I'm just going to take contrast here. Okay. So, um, are we guys are we ready? So we'll floor, we'll sine again. Oh, I have to hold this. Sorry. Yeah, I'll hold it. Okay. All right. Uh, oh no, we're not ready yet. I'm sorry. Go go ahead and enable. Sine sine. So just show the floor real quick. I guess it's not that crucial, but you'll see where we were in terms of where we started the pullback. So now, um, uh, it was my, my mistake. Please stay on the OCT. Just go distal again, please. Start all the way distal so they can see it because it's not on the screen Switch yet. Switch over to the OCT, please. The direct feed, please. Not the camera, just the dire direct feed. Okay. 
Okay, so you see the, uh, stop right there please. So that's the distal edge of the stent. You see uh, excellent apposition of the stent distally. And you, the, the, we see we're appropriately sized with the, with the stent to that vessel. Okay, now we're gonna slowly uh, come back through the stents. Keep coming. And we'll see a double layer here, okay? You see there a double layer stent, right? Uh, we lost the OCT, we're back on fluoro. Huh? Please stay on the OCT. We can see it now. Okay, keep coming back. Keep cut. Yeah, this yep. is stent apposition is very, is so well apposed stent you, inside you, it. And uh, stop, go back just a few frames. You, oh, that's fine there. You can clearly see the double layer of stent here. Is that, is that uh, evident? Is that coming across well? Yeah. Okay, so keep pulling, I mean, yeah. keep going uh, proximal, please. And we're just going to scroll through to make sure we have good apposition throughout. Keep going, you can go a little faster. Keep going. And we really want to come see to the, all the way to the proximal. We want to see where we land with the stent. That is the circumflex origin, is it? Right, yeah. yeah. And now we're uh, going to be in the left main here. Yeah. And this is the, uh, yeah, yeah, shortly yeah. we'll have a single layer stent. Yeah. Now you see here single layer. Okay. Yeah. And we expanded this nicely into this the left main. We're going to come all the way back. Still see stent, still see stent, stent. We still have stent. And we come right to the ostium, right there. That's the ostium. And we don't hang out. We might, you know, might have been better to take one more, uh, you know, a little bit further back, but this is a, a good result. Now we're just going to measure the minimal stent area. If you go uh, in this stent, a little bit distal, please. And we just give us a quick measurement because I think we're about out of time. Go distal, please. More distal. More distal. Keep going, keep going. Keep going, please keep going, keep going. Stop right there, a little bit further, that's the circ. Keep going, I'm sorry, distal, distal, I'm sorry. A little more, okay, just make a measurement there for us real quick. So, you know, it, it's still a little small, and the question is would people take, uh, you know, we didn't dilate distal to the circ very aggressively. Um, and would you, we should maybe probably take that 3-0 balloon, uh, you know, beyond that circumflex and dilate a little bit more aggressively. What are, what are your thoughts? We can't see the area very well, the Sushil, uh, what's the area? 3.5. 3.5. I mean, for drug eluting stents, ideally, obviously, you know, distal vessel size is relevant, but you ideally want to get above 5 and 5.5. We're not going to get that here, clearly, based on the v reference vessel size. Sure. But would, would people leave this like this, or would they uh, want to put a, make it a little bit more, uh, a little bit larger? Well, I think on the OCT, the stent expansion and apposition looks very good. Uh, personally, distally, uh, I would just leave it. Okay. I think it's very reasonable because I think it's for the reference vessel size, I think this is, is a reasonable area. So in that case, we'll, we'll probably stop here. Um, unless there are any other thoughts from you guys or you want to do anything further or? Yeah, that was, uh, I think, uh, excellent demonstration of OCT technique. The stent struts are seen so well that even a novice who is not very comfortable with the imaging can make out. Uh, congratulations, Sushil. I think uh, we'll go to that lecture, uh, which we had to stop uh, of Dr. Ravi Bhattina on non-invasive FFR. I just want to thank everyone and everyone at this okay. uh, at CARE and it's, uh, the, the team here and everyone has been outstanding and, uh, and, the, uh, and you know, working here with everyone has been uh, a true pleasure. Thank you. Is Dr. Nirmal also there? Yeah, yeah, he's here. He's here. Okay, congratulations to all of you. Thank, thank you. you. We'll go to the next lecture. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.